So that's what happened uh, last Friday, uh, you see in the video. Uh, so let's get into God's Word this, af uh, this afternoon. Uh, my message is on trusting the sovereignty of God. So today I want to share on something that we, we touched on quite a few times. I shared about this. We talked about God's sovereignty. But because in, it's so important to talk about this again, because in the times such as this, understanding the sovereignty of God plays an important role in our faith in God. So these two are closely related. The sovereignty of God and our faith in God, it, it is closely related. Our faith in God and our future is reliant on the sovereignty of God. If God is not sovereign, then our future is uncertain. If God is not sovereign, then our faith would be useless. But God is sovereign, and our faith in God is strengthened when we understand more clearly the sovereignty of God. And that's why I want to share on this subject again. Now what I mean is when we truly understand that God is in control over everything and that He is sovereign over all, then we will also have the faith to believe that all things will work together for good just as He promised. And we will also have the faith to believe that what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for our good and His glory. And this is how important it is for us to understand the sovereignty of God. Now when we say that God is sovereign, this means that God is in control over everything. And nothing happens without Him knowing and without Him allowing it to happen. God's sovereignty also means that, that He sets the boundaries to whatever is happening in the world around us. You know, the story of Job is a very good example of God's sovereignty. In Job chapter 1, Job is described as the richest person in that area in the time which he lived. The Bible describe, uh, says that he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He's also described as a man that feared God. The Lord himself described Job as the finest man in all the earth, blame, a blameless man of complete integrity and a man who fears God and stays away from evil. But in Job chapter 1, verse 9 to 11, Satan replied to the Lord, Sabi ni Satan kay Lord, Yes, but Job has a good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is but reach out and take away everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. In chapter 12 of, uh, chapter 1 of verse, uh, verse 12, All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with him, with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. So now begins the test and trials of Job. In just one day, he loses all of his sheep, cattle, servants, and even his children. But the Bible says that Job continues to bless the Lord. In Job chapter 2, verse 4, Satan says, Take away Job's health, and he will surely curse you. Verse 6, All right, do with him as you please, the Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. This is when Satan struck Job with boils from head to foot. So at this time, Job lost all his farm animals, servants, and children, and he was covered with boils from head to foot. Now aside from the trials that Job experienced, I want you to take notice of the sovereignty of God in the life of Job. 
You know, many times or most of the times when we talk about Job, we, we talk about his trials. But I want us to look at the sovereignty of God in the story of Job. God said in Job chapter 1 verse 12, he said, All right, you may test him, the Lord said to Satan. Do whatever you want with him, with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. In Job chapter 2 verse 6, All right, do with him as you please, the Lord said, said to Satan, but spare his life. So we see how Satan was limited in what he could do. He was limited by God in what he could do and what he could not do. Do whatever you want with him, with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically, the Lord said. Do with him as you please, but the Lord said, spare his life. So here we see the sovereignty of God, that God is still the one that is ultimately in control of everything. This, brothers and sisters, is proof that God, that everything that is happening now in your life and in this world and this quarantine and this COVID-19, it's happening because God allowed it to happen. Again, this means that God is sovereign. Satan has not taken over the world as some may think. God still sits on the throne and he is still sovereign over all. Everything is happening only because God is allowing it to happen. Amen. Now, does this mean that no matter what we do with our lives, God will have his way in our lives? Absolutely not. Whatever happens in our lives may be allowed by God. But the end result of our lives is either a result of our faith in the sovereignty of God or a lack of faith. The end result of our lives is not, a, is, is not a result of God's sovereignty, but can be a result of your faith in His sovereignty or lack of thereof. What I mean is, you can't just do whatever you want and say, well, God's will will happen anyway. Mangyayari naman talaga yung kalooban ng Diyos, so kahit anong gawin ko, Lord pa rin, hindi. That's why I'm talking about faith in His sovereignty. What's happening now in our lives, God is allowing but the end result of this, after we go through the trial, what will determine the end result is our faith in the sovereignty of God. God's sovereignty doesn't mean that you can live and do anything you wish to do and expect God to still have His way in your life. It is our faith in God's sovereignty that makes a difference in our lives. That's why I shared earlier that both are so closely related. Understanding the sovereignty of God and faith are so closely related. When you understand the sovereignty of God, you also have the faith to believe that all things work together for your good. You also have the faith to believe that what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good and for His glory. I'm going to read three scriptures that you know, reminds me of the sovereignty of God. I mentioned it, but let's go ahead and read it from the, from the scriptures itself. Romans 8.28 says, from the New Living Translation, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. So have faith. No matter what you are going through, God is sovereign. And His sovereignty is working everything out for your good. So keep the faith. Don't lose hope in the promises of God. Keep the faith. Genesis 50, 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. Have faith. What the enemy Satan meant for or intended to use to harm you, God in His sovereignty, remember, God in His sovereignty, He's in control over everything. God in His sovereignty allowed it into your life and intended it for your good. So sometimes God allows trials into our lives, but it's actually for something good. A good example of that is when God allowed Satan to use people to crucify Christ. Actually, that was the perfect will of God that Jesus would be crucified on the cross. But he used Satan and he used, he used people to, you know, bring that about. Satan thought he was winning. Satan thought he was defeating Satan. Little did he know that 
God was allowing it to happen to produce the perfect will of God. The same with us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure it. Have faith. God is faithful. Another way that we can read this is, God is allowing you to be tempted. Remember, God is sovereign. So He's allowing you to be tempted. So God is allowing you to be tempted. But in His sovereignty, He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to handle. Understand that. In His sovereignty, God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. In His sovereignty, He will also show you a way out. He will cause you to overcome. But you must have faith in the sovereignty of God. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep on. Keep, on the, keep holding on to your faith in God. God will turn it around. So in order for all things to work for your good, and in order for what was intended for evil to be used for your good, and in order for you to find a way out and overcome, you must trust and have faith in the sovereignty of our God. Again, what does God, God being sovereign mean? God's sovereignty means that God is in control over everything and nothing happens without Him allowing it to happen. It also means that God sets the boundaries to whatever is happening in the world around us and even in our lives. So faith in His sovereignty. So have faith in His sovereignty and wait for Him to turn things around for your good and for His glory. Have faith in the sovereignty of God. He is in control and wait for Him to turn things around for your good and for His glory. Finally, Psalm 27, verse 13 to verse 14. It says, Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Prior to verse 13 and 14, the psalmist David talks about, you know, the trials and, and the enemy and trouble. But then in verse 14, 13 and 14, David, David says, Yet I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. He is confident that God is going to turn things around for him. Verse 14, he says, Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, he repeats himself. Wait patiently for the Lord. Wait patiently. God is in control. God is sovereign and He will turn things around for your good and is for His glory if you have faith in Him and in His sovereignty. Wait patiently, have faith in God, in His sovereignty, and you will experience His goodness. He will turn things around for your good and His, His glory. Amen. So as Pastor Jimmy always shares, God is good. Keep the faith. Keep the faith, church. Don't lose hope. You're going through troubles. Keep the faith. God is good. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Doug, Doug, Pastor Jim, Pastor Arnell. Well, your message to is somehow connected. Hmm. And so, if Pastor Jess, uh, Jimmy will not share anything so okay mm, start pero okay. Pastor, okay na sige. okay so a while ago sabi ni Pastor Jesse have faith in God trust Him and don't lose hope and that's my topic seize that hope Amen. because God is sovereign because God is in control therefore we are able to hope in the Lord Marami sa atin ngayon, nawawala ng pag-asa. And, yeah, it's, it's a reality na many lose their jobs and businesses and it's easy to lose hope. But the Bible says, katulad siya ni Pastor Jesse, that God is in control, He's sovereign. Therefore, 
we can be hopeful. Maari tayong umasa. And uh, I would like to read my <coughs> message or my scripture in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 to 19, the voice translation. So it says in verse 18, So God has given us two unchanging things. So binigyan tayo ng Panginoong Diyos ng dalawang bagay na hindi talaga magbabago. Magbago ng lahat ng bagay, tumaas na ang presyo ng bilihin, iwanan kayo ng mga kaibigan nyo, mahal nyo sa buhay. Pero itong dalawang bagay nito will not change. And this is His promise and His oath. Dalawang bagay po, yung pangako niya at yung kanyang panunumpa. So God has a thousand promises sa Bible. And God made it to a higher level na yung kanyang mga pangako, sumumpa siya. Na itong mga pangako ito will come to pass sa ating buhay. And ibig sabihin, sabi doon, let's move on. This proved that it is impossible for God to lie. So, imposible na magsinungaling or bumalya ang Panginoong Diyos. Again, because He's sovereign sa lahat ng kanyang pangako, ito'y mangyayari. Kayang-kaya niya itong tuparin. Dahil meron dalawang bagay na binigay niya sa atin. His promise and His oath. This proved that it is impossible for God to lie. Maaring ako o sino man sa inyo o sino mang taong tinitingala natin ay maaring makapagsinungaling or nangako at hindi natupad yung pangako. But God will never. It is impossible for God to lie. And as a, as a result, sabi doon, we who come to God for refuge, we who come to, to trust in God, to have faith in God, sabi doon, might be encouraged. Meron tayong uh, kalakasan loob. What? To seize that hope, panghawakan, to lay hold of that hope. And yes, sometimes wawalan tayo ng pag-asa, but the Bible says na to lay hold of that hope that is set before us. Nandiyan dyan po sa harapan natin. Nandiyan dyan, binitawan ng Panginoong Diyos yung mga pangako niyan na mapanghawakan natin yung, mga, yung pag-asa na yan. Verse 19, at itong hope na to, itong pag-asa na to, hindi lamang po wishful thinking o sana or it's not being positive lamang. Kundi sabi dito verse 19, listen, that hope is real and true. Praise the Lord. Meron tayong pag-asa na totoo at matibay. Ito ay hindi lamang wishful thinking. Sana mangyari. Sana kung lolobi ng Panginoong Diyos. Hindi po. It's more than that. Sabi doon, that hope is real and true. At sabi doon, an anchor. Naalala yung shiner ko last year. Anchor. Angka. An anchor to steady our restless souls. Again, aminin natin, sometimes, I myself become restless. Minsan sa overwhelming situation, problema, pagsubok. And a lot of us, di ba, dinaanan natin ito. Paano na ito? Nawawala na ako ng pag-asa. But we have this hope, an anchor to steady our restless souls. Now you're listening right now and somehow yung, yung damdamin mo, yung soul mo ay medyo kinakabahan wala ka mahawakan. But we have this hope, an anchor to steady our restless soul. A hope that leads us back behind the curtain to where God is. Itong pag-asa na to ay umaabot doon sa ating Diyos. As the high priest did in the days when reconciliation flowed from sacrifices in the temple. Now, I want to share that hope ay napakahalagang bagay. Wala nang hihigit pa sa isang tao na kapag ang taong ito ay nawala ng pag-asa. But kapag ang tao, kahit anong laki ng problema niya, kapag nandun pa rin yung hope, may pag-asang magbago yung kanyang buhay. Again, sabi sa Biblia, that hope is an anchor na nagbibigay kapanatagan sa ating buhay. I need that hope. That hope to steady my restless souls. May mga pagkakataon, hindi ko alam ang gagawin, hindi ko alam kung saan kukuha, kung saan aawak. But I thank God that we have that hope. And this hope is an anchor. Now, an anchor, let me uh, share you last year, Shinerko po to. An anchor is a, a device normally made of metal used to connect a vessel to the bed of the body of the water 
to prevent the crap or the, the, the ship or bangka from drip, drifting due to the wind or current. In other words, para hindi tangayin o masira yung bangka dahil sa lakas ng agos o hangin. And it keeps the vessels in one place no matter how strong the wind or current. Na kahit anong lakas ng alon o hangin, kapag ang isang bangka ay naka-anchor, hindi po ito tatangayin. Yan po ang ating pag-asa na meron tayo kay Kristo Jesus. And again, three reasons you need an anchor for the soul. Number one, because hardship will come. Sinare po kanina ni Pastor Jesse na may mga bagay na ibabato ang kaaway, may mga bagay na nagkakamali tayo. And we need the anchor. Again, hardship or trials is a present reality in a broken world. Bahagi po yan. Hindi po natin yan matatakasan. But there will be a season in your life and mine when that hardship hardship will become more acute. Para bang antindi. But we have a firm anchor for our souls, which is what we need during times of hardship. Katulad nito. Our families, our friends, our work, our income, this will go under change or loss. Mawawala po yan. Magbabago po yan. But our souls can remain secure. Ito po. Na kahit ano nangyayari sa ating paligid, our souls can remain secure because they are anchored to something secure, stable, matibay po. And that hope is Christ that's that not change. Hindi po nagbabago ang ating Panginoong Diyos. Kaya mahalaga na meron tayong hope as an anchor. Pangalawa, because our hearts tends to drip. Kahit anong tagal na natin sa Panginoong Diyos, kung minsan we have a tendency to drip. Minsan konting lihis lang natin, hindi natin napapansin, malayo na pala tayo sa Panginoong Diyos. Again, if you let left or iniwanan natin ang isang ship in the middle of a body of water and no matter how calm and serene the water might seem on the surface it will inevitably, inevitably start to drip unti-unti ang tatangayin that's because even though the surface appears calm kuminsan okay ang pangapangyayari but there are currents constantly operating below the surface may mga bagay unti-unti kala mo maliliit lamang pero lumalaki na bubu at yun ay tumatangay sa ating puso and so we need an anchor sa ating puso at kaluluwa upang wag po tayong tangayin ng anumang agos o damdamin pangatlo because it's our only connection to God Christ the hope of glory yan po ang ating connection na kahit ano mangyari o di nangyari sa buhay natin sa mga nagdaang araw, hindi tayo dapat mawala ng pag-asa. Don't lose hope, sabi ni Pastor Jesse. Ang pag-asa ay pagtingin sa kinibukasan na merong positibong pananaw sapagkat God is sovereign. Amen. And every opportunity can be a means para po tayo patuloy na magtiwala sa Diyos. A hope that leads us back behind the curtain to where God is. Yan po yung ating pag-asa. Nandun na po si Kristo na una na po para sa atin. At yung ating connection sa ating Panginoong Jesus, yan po ang ating pangahawakan. As I end, again, don't lose hope. Imagine kung walang angkla ang isang bangka sa gitna ng malakas na hangin o bagyo. Ito ay tatangayin saan man pumihit ang hangin. Subalit, if we have that anchor in Christ, ano man mangyari, hindi man natin maintindihan why all these things are happening. Kung tayo ay nakaangkla sa Panginoong Diyos, yung pag-asa na yan, hindi po tayo matatangay. Put our trust or our hope in God. Psalms 43 verse 5, as I end, Why so downcast, O my soul? Kinakausap ni David yung kanyang sarili. Bakit ka nalulumo o kaluluwa ko? Bakit ka nagbabagabag? Sabi doon, umasa ka sa Panginoong Diyos. Put your hope in God. So we can practice hoping in God. Kakausapin natin yung ating sarili. Put your hope in God. Trust Him. He is sovereign and God made that thing sa buhay po natin possible. So I hope na encourage po kayo sa aming pagpapatuloy ng pag-share ng message. God bless po. So before um, Pastor Jimmy comes in, I just like to uh, add to Pastor Arnell's sharing. Mm-hmm. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says, mm-hmm. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Amen.
Amen. So just keep holding on. And let me add by reading verse 35 of this uh, chapter. It says, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward. Verse 36, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Hold on. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw away your faith. Hold on to your hope. You have need of endurance like I shared. We need to wait so that after we have done the will of God. So waiting means not just doing nothing. It means doing the will of God. You may receive what God has promised. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. God is good. Hallelujah. Pastor Jim. Sabi po sa Bible that is that Jesus Christ in you is the hope of glory. So yung mga pinag-usapan po namin ngayon about hope, uh, there's really no other hope than Jesus Christ. Kung kaya, today I would like to invite you Amen. to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I say what we're talking about, hope uh, has a name. Amen. Hope has a name. And that name is Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. So I'm going to ask you, Patid, wherever you may be, you need Jesus. Yes. Not just because of the times, the season that we we're experiencing, but kahit kailan, we need Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's right. When, you're, when your life is doing well, you need Jesus. When, when your life is in turmoil, you need Jesus. Jesus. Ano man ang pinagdadaanan natin? Kasi yeah, often, we, we tend to tell people, Merong ang pinagdadaan ng problema. You need Jesus Christ. So that's true. Mm-hmm. Pero what if you're not? Paano kung kahit na ngayong may COVID uh, situation? Now that we're in quarantine, well, what if you're still doing well? What if you're you have income, maganda yung buhay mo, and everything is going well? Do you need Jesus or not? Yes, you do. Kasi ang hope natin po ay na kay Jesus at Jesus lamang. Yes. And uh, siya yung, siya lang yung He's the only one that we can truly trust. Uh, as we have noticed, as we have realized that uh, jobs and uh, our finances cannot be trusted. Hindi natin pwedeng pagkatiwalaan yan. Education, whatever, your, pro- your profession, your family, uh, your friends. Hindi, you know, although you know, it's good to have friends, it's good to have family, pero hindi, hindi tayo pwedeng mag... Tiwala, ibig sabihin, to put our life in their hands. The true life that we can, our life, may lagay sa panga, sa, sa kamay ng sino man, ay kay Jesus lamang. Jesus. And that's Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, mm. and our friend. So like I mentioned, I'll ask you to please join me, and let's just ask Jesus to come into our lives. Amen. Today, man. Sabihin lamang po natin, Jesus, Jesus, I welcome you. I welcome, I welcome you into my life. Into my life. I accept you. I accept you as my Lord. As my Lord. As my Savior. As my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Give me the strength. Give me the strength to live for you. To live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you pray that prayer, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to connect with us. May mga tao pong after the service, uh, they, they send us messages. And uh, actually, we have one person na gusto magpa-water baptism. Gusto niya baptized during this time. And we're still uh, considering and uh, see what we can do to make this happen. But if you have any questions about God's Word, uh, or you just have uh, something going on in your heart, kailangan mo ng panalangin, feel free to send us uh, a message and tell us, we, I need prayer. And then uh, we can pray for you. And then also we can send your prayer requests uh, dun sa aming mga prayer teams that uh, are always praying. Now, if your your situation is quite personal, ayaw mo ipaalam sa amin, wala namang problema yun. Just let, just let us know you need prayer. Uh, God knows exactly what you're going through. So, yes. uh, what I'm going to share this afternoon is quite, um, although not similar in, in the sense, but it's connected with what uh, Pastor Jesse and Pastor Arnell has been sharing. And my topic is, what do you see? Where is God? Now let me read 2 Kings 6, verse 16, hanggang verse 17. And it says, Elisha answered, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us 
are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, please open the eye, his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his servant's eyes and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire surrounding Elisha. So ang, ang kwento pong ito, si Elisha, um, parang spia po si Elisha. So yung kalaban nila, uh, what happened was, uh, every time na merong usapan yung kalaban ng Israel, nalalaman po ng Israel sa pamamagitan po ni Elisha, kasi si Elisha ay uh, alagad ng Panginoon. So he would have insight as to what the enemy of Israel was was trying to do. So nangyari, sabi nila, sino ba yung nagpapaalam sa Israel kung anong mga diskarte natin. So, uh, what happened was, uh, they found out it was Elisha. So, they sent a, an army, thousands upon thousands of, of um, uh, military men, mga soldiers, to capture one single man, Elijah, Elisha, uh, actually, dalawa sila, and, and his servant. So, libu-libu mga kawa lang pumunta just to apprehend Elisha. Imagine that, no? dalawang tao lang sila, Elisha and his servant. Tapos libo ka tao ang pinadala para ma-apprehend siya. But then, well, see what happened. What happened was, uh, yung servant natakot kasi sabi niya, dami-dami yung kalaban doon sa labas. Mm. And then, Elisha uh, had hope. Panatag ang loob niya because uh, to join together what Pastor Jez shared and Pastor Arnel. But he had hope because he knew God was, God was sovereign. <laughs> so, you know, ako yung pang pinali. So, ibig sabihin, he had hope in God because he knew that God was sovereign. So, bali wala sa kanina, nakikita nilang kalaban kasi mas nakita niya po yung kakampi. And in life, often that happens. Yung nakikita natin yung kalaban pero yung kakampi, nakakalimutan natin, may kakampi pala tayo. Ang kakampi po natin si Lord, of course. You know, if God is with us, who can be against us? Now, what did uh, Elisha do? In verse 17, sabi niya, and he said, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And then finally, mabuksan yung mata ng servant. What happens is uh, he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. So, hindi lamang tinapata ng Diyos yung kalaban ng uh, one is to one. Nilamangan ng Diyos yung kalaban, pero hindi lamang ganun. If you imagine they were on fire, naglilihab yung mga uh, yung mga kawal pati yung mga kabayo. So talong talo talaga yung kalaban. And that's what we have to understand in life. Regardless of what we face in life, regardless of what um, a situation we may be, lamang na lamang po tayo. We are always gonna be on the winning team if we have Jesus Christ in our life. If God is with us, as I've mentioned, who can be against us? We need to see God in every situation. Kailan makita po natin ang Dios sa lahat ng situation. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6 from the Amplified Bible it says, "In all your ways know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way." So we have to acknowledge him in all our ways. But let's look at in a different translation. In the Christian Standard Bible it says, "In all your ways know him, and he will make your path straight. That is in the Christian Standard Bible. Now, tignan natin sa Dewey, uh, Dewey Rames. Uh, in all thy ways, think on him, and he will direct thy steps. So, ibig sabihin, sa lahat ng pinagdadaan natin, we have to see God. We have to acknowledge him. Kilalanin po natin na meron Diyos. He is sovereign. He's there. Put our hope in him uh, in every situation. What we see determines how we respond. Kung papano po tayo makakita, what we see determines how we respond. And uh, how, do we di- how do we direct our sight? Uh, often kasi mga kapatid, we, we direct our sight towards the problem. Looking at the, yung lumakad po sa tubig si, uh, si Peter. Uh, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 30. It says, but when Peter, when he saw si Pedro, the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Peter chose to see the strength of the wind instead of the, the power of God in Jesus. So, minsan po nangyayari ganyan ang nangyayari po sa atin. Uh, pinipili po natin na uh, makita yung, yung kamandag ng kalaban uh, at hindi po yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos. And don't get me wrong, kami pong mga pastor, hindi po kami exempted sa mga ganyang 
uh, karanasan na mm-hmm. pakiramdam. Kami po ay natatakot din. Kami po ay, uh, you know, tao lamang po kami. As, as we have discussed last Wednesday, kami po ay tao lamang. So we are, when we're faced with challenges, we have the choice whether or not to uh, see God or to see the enemy. And kung minsan po, sa totoo lang, we, we see the effect of what the enemy is doing in our life. Nangyayari po talaga yan sa amin. Kasi, as I've mentioned, tao lamang kami. Pero you know what? what uh, personally, ako, what keeps me going and strengthens my faith, mga kapatid, it's kami, tatlo. And then you, the congregation, the family, our friends, the people in Christ that we constantly connect with. Uh, aside from drawing strength from God and anchoring our hope in Him, yung sama-sama po kami, uh, kasi like, like right now, uh, may problema tayo, pero alam ko hindi ako nag-iisa. Alam ko kung ano yung problema ko, problema rin ni Jesse, uh, problema rin ni Arnel. Alam ko patas-patas kami may pinagdadaanan. Kaya lumalakas po yung loob ko. Uh, when we go dun sa sa mga community and we give out aros caldo, uh, madalas po sabi ni Pastor Arnel, sama-sama po tayo dito, uh, hintay-hintay na, baka karaos din tayo. Lagi niya sinasabi yan, we just put your hope in God. Ganun po. You know, pero kung nag-iisa lang ako, ay, ay wala na. <laughs> Ang hirap talaga kung mag-iisa mo lang. So why, why am I sharing this? Bakit ko sinasabi na napakahalaga that you connect yourself with people? You must. Kasi lahat po ng sineshare namin, uh, uh, pag-asa kay Jesus, uh, uh, God is sovereign, and then I'm telling you to see God in every situation. Pero all of that doesn't make any sense if you're all alone in life. Kasi ang sabi po ng uh, God created us in such a way na kailangan natin ang bawat isa. Reach out to other people. You know, get your, your life uh, connected with people. Kahit ngayon, medyo online-online lang tayo masyado. Pero the, God, praise God, He has given us a way to uh, connect kahit na online. Connect with people that will help you uh, uh, get through these uh, difficult times. Kaya nga sabi po sa Bible, eh, don't neglect uh, the gathering of the brethren because that is where you, you get your, you know, your, your uh, strength. Uh, as as a Christian, so mga kapatid, keep that in your mind, and I'll just share a couple of more scriptures. Uh, Matthew chapter 14 verse 30. But when he realized how high the waves were, he became frightened and started to sink. So na realize na yung ano yung problema hindi niya na realize ang Dios. But if we realize God, that's when we'll be able to get through these difficult times. Condition your mind to dwell on God thoughts. Yan ang gusto kong, uh, that's where I'm going to end uh, this afternoon. Condition your mind to dwell on God thoughts. Proverbs 4 verse 23, Be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. And finally, uh, Isaiah 26 and verse 3, Perfect and absolute peace surrounds those whose imaginations are consumed with you. So if, if our imaginations are consumed, ibig sabihin na, no ubos yung ating pag-iisip sa Diyos. You know, it's consumed by Him. Then our lives will be at peace. Kagaya ng pong shinare kong uh, scripture. I, uh, I shared, a, I wrote a devotion the other day. Ang title po ng devotion, I hope you read it. Ang title po ay Kropek. Kropek. By the way, uh, speaking of Kropek, yan po yung favorite uh, uh, ano yun? snack ni ng ate namin si Kay and incidentally yung anak na si Joshua for eh, birthday niya June as well so nakalimutan natin ipati oh, ano? oh, pinaalala lang sa akin nung, nung uh, sekretarya namin eh, si Alan <laughs> so happy uh, birthday Joshua. Joshua now where are we? Uh, Kropek yung chichero kalapad <laughs> yung Kropek now yung yung ginawa ko pong devotion about Kropek it's, it's actually a true story a conversation between the Kropek seller. Alam niyo yung Kropek, no? if you don't know Kropek, yung po yung chichero na mukhang spam. Na <laughs> so square pa, you know, mm-hmm. rectangular. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yung po yung benta niya, chichero na ano, Kropek. On EDSA. Doon sa EDSA, so ma-traffic, you know, it's obviously, mas, lagi siya ma-traffic. Mm-hmm. And itong si vendor, nagbebenta ng Kropek. Until finally, tatlo na lang yung 
supot ng Crotec na binebenta niya. And then may tumigil na kotse sa harap niya na sabi, uh, bilhin ko na lang yung Crotec mo. So, binili niya yung tatlong Crotec and, uh, you know, pampatawid gutom kasi nga sa haba ng oras na ginugol niya dun sa traffic, ginutom na siya. And then, syempre, itong dalawa, kwento-kwento, yung nagtitinda ng Crotec tsaka yung nagdadrive ng kotse. Etong nagde-drive ng kotse, reklamo ang naiisip niya. Ma-traffic talagang, kakasira ng araw. Ito namang nagbebenta ng Crotex. Sabi niya, sana bukas ma-traffic ulit. <laughs> Kasi yung, yung sa, ibig sabihin niya, nabenta niya lahat ng paninda niya dahil sa traffic. traffic. So tayo, we can have the exact same experience. You can be in the exact same place at the same time, but have a different perspective. Uh, yung Crotec uh, vendor, siyempre natuwa kasi naubos yung Crotec niya. Yung nagdadrive naman, na, na, nasuya kasi nandun siya sa traffic magdamag. Eh, you, it's really your choice. It's our choice. How are we gonna see God in the situations we face? Amen. Ngayon, nandun, dito tayo sa quarantine time, ano bang nararamdaman natin? Are you gonna see God in it or are you gonna complain? Pwede po eh. Kasi the Bible says that God is wherever two or three gathered in His name, He is there. And He will never leave you nor forsake you. So, ibig sabihin, kasama natin ang Diyos. So, ibig sabihin, what we have to do now is, ano bang choice, or what is the choice you're going to make in life? Are you going to see God? Or are you going to see the demonyo? Are you going to see the kalaban? Or are you going to see God? It's your choice. It's my choice. Tulong-tulong po tayo to see God in our lives. Amen. 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 So, you know, um, as we've been talking about, uh, nandiyan talaga yung problema. Uh, there's no way around it. It's part of life. But like Pastor Jimmy shared, you know, you need, we need to see God in every situation. We need to see the God of hope. We need to see the God that is sovereign. He's, he's, he's in every situation. He's there. We just need to open our eyes and see it. And uh, ako personally, you know, when faced with uh, troubles, trials of any kind, I, I work hard at looking for God in every situation because sometimes it's not that easy. So I, 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 I work hard at looking for the smallest um, clue or the, 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 the smallest uh, thing that I can see that to help me understand that God is at work. <laughs> it, that helps a lot. You know, it just tells me God is working. God is working. He started something. He's going to He's going to work it out. He's going to finish it. And so I work hard at looking for the good instead of, you know, uh, complaining, instead of looking at and magnifying the problems. I work hard at looking for the good in every given situation. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at it, but that's something that I work hard at doing. And I encourage you to do that. I have one scripture. You know, eyes is not necessarily your physical eyes. The Bible talks about the eyes of understanding. In uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, it says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray that the eyes of your under, your heart, some translations use understanding, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And so we need to ask God, Lord God, open the eyes of my understanding. Help me to see you in every situation. Help me to understand your sovereignty. Help me to, to see your sovereignty in every given situation that I'm facing. God is in every situation. God is there. God is with you. He's not just there beside you. He is at work in our lives. Amen. Amen. He is at work. And so, you know, trust God. Uh, you know, right now I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. Uh, even as we're sharing, Amen. I'm I'm. My faith is, my spirit, my faith is being lifted. Not that I was down when I started, but, you know, just talking about the promises of God and the Word of God, it lifts your spirit. And I pray that as you're listening to us right now, that you too will be lifted in your spirits, that you will be encouraged by the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
So again, may tendency nga tayo to magnify things, di ba? Minsan ang lit lang ang problema, pero we magnify it so much to the point na akala natin ang laki-laki talaga nito. Pero again, sabi nga nila, madalas sinasabi natin kung gaano kalaki yung problema natin sa Diyos. Pero nakakalimutan natin sabihin sa problema kung gaano kalaki ang Diyos natin. Amen. Amen. So it's a matter of magnifying things. So let's magnify the Lord instead of magnifying problems. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> All right. Well, that is our service for today. Yes. I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope you were uh, blessed by today's service. And uh, thank you, Pastor Arnel. Thank you, Pastor Jess. Yes. Uh, thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. Thank you, sa team. Thank you, sa team. By the way, uh, everybody's here. Nandito si Kuya Roy. Si Kuya Roy. <laughs> yeah, back, uh, the Amen yeah. man. The Amen <laughs> man. We're all here. <laughs> uh, God has been <laughs> truly good. And uh, yeah. we are, as I've mentioned, we are preparing for uh, uh, MGCQ. Yeah. So Slowly we are. But surely. All, we're getting ready for that. Uh, actually, we've been praying and then also been meeting a lot, discussing how we were going to. Uh, have communion, how we we're going to have our services. So, lahat yan po pinag-usapan namin and uh, we are uh, really hopeful uh, that Amen. God has been leading us and uh, God is good talaga. Amen. So, if uh, uh, we ask that you would join us on Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon as well uh, for our service. That's the service where we have testimonies and prayer. So, if you have a testimony, send in the testimony. Kung meron kayong video uh, of your testimony, feel free to share it with us or maybe you have a testimony just share, send a picture halimbawa uh, nagkasakit kayo then gumaling kayo meron kayong picture na habang uh, may sakit kayo then you know the before and the after picture mga ganun ba o kaya God has blessed you with something or you've got God blessed you with a new job during this time mm-hmm. alam ko there's some people that got hired during the uh, alam ko may mag-asawa nagkaroon ng trabaho <laughs> eh. iba lang wala ng trabaho yung uwi na nga yun sana eh yung uwi na sana. So, yeah, itong okay. mag-asawa to ano <laughs> kakaiba eh yung karinasan nila they, you know everybody's losing their job sila nagkaroon ng trabaho yeah. so yung mga ganun ba you can send a picture of what's going on you know encourage people uh, eh, hindi ibig sabihin that you're parang mas magaling kayo sa iba that's not what the point is we are sharing the goodness of God so wag mahiya po to share wag niyo isipin na baka naman sabihin nilang yabang ko hindi naman ganun we want to like boast in the Lord say, we want to boast in the Lord Amen. we want yes. to magnify God Amen. in circumstances like this so thank you for joining us today Amen. we will be seeing you again on Wednesday and uh, as we progress in the situation we will constantly uh, update you as to what we will be taking steps we will be taking in the future mm-hmm. so just uh, stay tuned to what we're doing uh, and also keep us in your prayers as well. So with that, I will be closing in prayer. And then after which, uh, Pastor Arnell and the worship team will be leading us in a closing song. Yes. So let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For this time that you have allowed us to gather again. Yes. Uh, yeah. Although physically we're not really together. But uh, I know alam namin Panginoon, that families are gathered together now. And that as a church, we are still gathered as one church, as one body. Salamat po, Panginoon, for allowing us to do so. Lord, let your name be glorified. And uh, for those that are facing difficult times, what we have shared today, let your word truly manifest in their lives and uh, let everybody uh, be strengthened. Yes, Lord. Let us be strengthened, Panginoon, by your spirit. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless CRC. God, God bless, bless the Philippines. Philippines. And, and God, God bless, bless Alongapo. Hallelujah. God is good.